Goldman Sachs handily beating on both the top and bottom line. Those shares off their intraday highs now up about 1.6%. Wilfred Frost has the latest. Uh, hey, Leslie, certainly beating on the both lines, as you said. The most pronounced part of the beat came on the trading front, particularly fixed income currencies and commodities. FIC revenue was up $4.2 billion, uh, a massive 250% rise year over year. JP Morgan yesterday rose 120%, Citi 70%. 2.9 billion revenue in equities, that's up 46%, uh, also very strong. Uh, JP Morgan's was up about 40%, Citi's was slightly down. Their investment banking revenue of 2.7 billion, also uh, very strong. They did see provisions rise from 940 million in Q1 to 1.6 billion in Q2. That was ahead of forecast. Uh, but that not enough to derail the optimism, uh, though the shares, have, as you said, have paired some of those gains now at 1.7%. PNC and USB also out with numbers this morning. They're moving higher too. USB's numbers uh, were strong beats on both lines. Less of an increase for them on provisions than forecast. PNC less positive on that provisions uh, front, but nonetheless, the stock high. Why? Well, USB and PNC, not as bad as Wells Fargo, which yesterday was still a question for the regionals to answer. Uh, but Wells itself also reversing a lot of yesterday's losses. Uh, so positive vaccine news, no doubt helping this cyclical sector today. That despite still uncertain macro outlook from management. Here's Goldman Sachs's David Solomon. As we speak today, the path to reopening in many U.S. states and corresponding economic consequences remain unclear. Since our April earnings call, our economists' estimates for 2020 U.S. GDP improved from an expected contraction in 2020 of 6.2 percent to 4.6 percent today, driven by expectations of a faster rebound from a deeper trough. That said, on a global basis, Growth expectations for 2020 deteriorated from an expected 2.5 percent decline in April to a 3.4 percent contraction expected today. So the sector is up uh, strongly today. Morgan Stanley and Bank of America to come tomorrow. Well, um, you know, a bit surprising. Goldman's, uh, again, only up one point. 2% now the stock is, uh, I was going to say, a bit surprising, Goldman's kind of tepid response to what mm -hmm. were these very strong numbers. I would point out, I think you may have mentioned it, book value, 227.31. I mean, that is still trading below book value. I would assume a continued frustration for management. We'll see what we get, by the way, tomorrow from Morgan Stanley when that company reports earnings as well. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the reasons it's paired back, we just started to get onto the Q&A about five minutes ago of the call. The rest was the opening statements. Uh, the first question, as you would expect, was how sustainable uh, are these extraordinary beats in, in trading revenues? Uh, and the answer, again, saying that it's unlikely we'll have the same type of scenario we've seen over the last three or four months for the rest of this year. So that one of the factors that's probably weighed uh, on the uh, stock, but of course still higher. Uh, as you said with uh, the book value and this question mark for Morgan Stanley, for Goldman Sachs, where uh, the results are good and we're still below book value, uh, we'll see if that continues uh, lastingly. On that point, uh, David, uh, clear in the opening remarks that returns, return on equity, return on assets, would have been better still if not for uh, not just the provisions point that everyone was looking at, but the litigation point. So they took some litigation costs as well. We don't know what that's necessarily relate, perhaps Still getting closer to that one MDB settlement, right. we don't know. Uh, but uh, the returns, pretty good for Goldman Sachs, as you say. Uh, if, we're, if we're back to double-digit returns on a sustainable business basis in the medium term, uh, I doubt it'll be trading below book value for long. Hey, Wolf, have you noticed any difference in tone among the CEOs in the second quarter versus the first quarter, uh, especially as it pertains to uh, the economic recovery? Yes, uh, I think that uh, there was undoubted uncertainty at the end of the first quarter, but it was more focused on particular sectors. That's broadened out, but perhaps the depth of the uncertainty uh, has eased a little bit. But the most stark difference, I would say, was from the early June last updates we got from management at various conferences, which was more positive. There was a more clear improvement in positivity from the end of Q1 to early June than there was uh, on these conference calls. And there's no doubt there's still great uncertainty on the outlook. Uh, and that's why it's a little surprising when you see the whole sector reverse uh, today versus yesterday without any clear change in tone, other than perhaps some of that vaccine news.